Hi everyone. Today we're going to continue looking at the water cycle and we're going to be worrying about what happens to the water after it falls from the sky and hits the ground. Uh, should you need to get a hold of me, uh, my email address is on the screen. It's rcrawford at jcpsmail.org. All right, let's jump right in. So yesterday when we looked at the overall water cycle, we talked about those four important processes and uh, I reminded you that the water cycle is really about moving water um, from Earth's surface back up into the atmosphere and back out over land. So this is really about refreshing and moving water around on Earth. Uh, we stopped with precipitation, which uh, as you know is either rain or snow or sleet or hail that is coming from a cloud and it's redistributing that water on earth so let's take a look at after precipitation hits the ground all right so when precipitation uh, hits the ground we've got two basic uh, things that can happen to it uh, the first thing is is that precipitation could uh, be um, infiltrated okay or it could pass into the soil so infiltration is sort of this process it's what happens when water first seeps into the soil and so you've undoubtedly been outside after a rainstorm and you know that the soil can get very waterlogged it can get soaked well that's a good um, that's a good example of infiltration and realize that infiltration is shallow right this is right at the surface and this is where precipitation is absorbed now percolation is very much like uh, infiltration but if we look percolation is happening much deeper okay so this is still the movement of water uh, from the surface deeper underground that's what percolation is um, and that's the difference is infiltration is very shallow whereas percolation means that that water is moving deeper deeper underground um, once we get uh, the water moving deeper underground it's appropriate to go ahead and call it groundwater okay so groundwater is just really any any water that is underneath our surface it's underground now sometimes uh, i think students tend to imagine that groundwater is going to be like in these large caverns or um it's going to be in these big open spaces but that's not generally true most groundwater is actually uh, held in cracks and pores of solid rock, what we might call bedrock. Essentially, the rock underground is going to be saturated. It's going to be filled with water, much like a sponge, except that it's rock. Okay. So when we think about groundwater, I want you to think about groundwater as being inside of solid bedrock. Um, and that will about take care of uh, groundwater. I don't need us to know any more about that. All right. Uh, I do want to at least think about infiltration and how what's at the surface is going to impact infiltration. So here we have what's called the natural water cycle. I want you to think this as being, uh, you notice that this is a forested area with some meadows. And then over here we have an urban area. So urban just means city or developed. And so here we have like a city skyline and uh, you can see that there's lots of skyscrapers and the like. So I want to think about infiltration. Remember, infiltration is where the water first seeps into the ground. Now, in a natural area like a forest, you know, we're going to have uh, soil and we're going to have lots of plant cover like grass and trees. Um, plants and trees and that soil are going to be permeable. They're going to allow the water to pass through. And the grass and the plants actually slow the water down, giving the water more time to be infiltrated, to pass into the soil. Um, as a result, you're not going to have a lot of runoff. Okay, you're going to have some runoff that's going to make its way into streams, um, but you're going to have a lot of water that is going to pass into the ground. Now, if we were to compare that with uh, what we might find in the cities, well, as you know, you're going to have, you know, the buildings and the parking areas and the roads. All of that is going to be sort of paved. Um, it's going to be developed in ways that the water, the soil is not exposed. It's going to be covered up. So as a result, in an urban area, you're going to have much less infiltration, right? 
So much less water is going to pass into the ground and be, be able to be absorbed in that bedrock. Most of the water in urban areas is going to become runoff. It's just gonna, and you've undoubtedly seen this after a heavy storm uh, on roadways, you've seen uh, water just running down the roadway. Well, in really big urban areas, um, it is um, much, much more, uh, much, much more runoff than you, than we would maybe see here. So, you know, I want you to be able to compare, uh, you know, what would happen in a natural area as opposed to an urban area with um, when we talk about infiltration. All right, so if water does not get infiltrated and percolated and become part of the groundwater, um, instead it may just run off. And so water that runs along uh, our surface or flows across our surface, we call that surface runoff. And so, you know, that's gonna look like, you know, tiny little Tiny, tiny little tributaries of water that are going to join together, usually flowing downhill, and they're going to join and make larger tributaries. But essentially, this is what a surface runoff is. It's excess water that is not absorbed. It is not uh, infiltrated into the soil, and it is just going to flow away across our surface. So I want you to think of things like rivers and streams and springs, things like that. Now. Uh, I do want you to keep in mind that the ultimate destination of all of this surface runoff is the ocean. So even tiny streams that we have here locally, you know, they're going to flow into even larger streams. So I know, for example, I live on Greens Creek, and I know that Greens Creek flows into Savannah Creek, and I know that Savannah Creek flows into the river, Tuckasegia River, and then I know that the, the Tuckasegia River is going to flow into a larger river until eventually the water uh, that is in there right now is going to reach the ocean, okay? So surface runoff is just this idea. This is just excess water that was not absorbed into the ground, uh, that didn't become groundwater, and it is flowing back toward the ocean, right? It's just running along our surface. And guys, I think that about covers it for today. Um, so keep in mind, groundwater versus surface runoff, when you look at that water cycle, those are two important bits of the water cycle. I want you to have a great day.